Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Angela. I'm a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator. And my channel is dedicated to those of you that are just getting started out in this wonderful world of voiceover and audiobook narration. And through my channel, I answer your questions and I share with you some of the techniques that I use every day in my own voiceover business and for when I produce audiobooks. So today, what I wanted to go over with you is that someone had asked me recently about adding music to audiobooks and if it can be done, how should it be done? And that's what we're going to get into today. So let's get into it. Okay, so before we go much further, I do want to say that ACX on their site they actually don't recommend adding audio or excuse me, music to audiobooks because it can, they say that the listeners say it's distracting. They don't prohibit it. You can use music for your audiobooks, but they just on their site say that, say that they don't recommend it. And it also affects the whisper sync feature. So I rarely add music to audiobooks, but on a rare occasion I do. And I just so happen to have a, children's book right now that's kind of like a spelling practice book that the client had provided me with music to use to include in their audiobook. And on the topic of that um, music, uh, if you do use music in the audiobook that you're producing, make sure that the music that you're using, if it wasn't provided by the client, if the music that you're using, the rights for that music include audiobook use, not all rights are applicable for audiobooks. So just make sure that you read through the rights of whatever music that you're listening, using, <laughs> and make sure that those rights include audiobook usage. So I'm going to share my screen on Adobe Audition and show you how I add music to an audiobook. So let's go do that now. All right, so here we are in my DAW or my digital audio workstation, and I have this set to multi-track, which gives me the ability to uh, manipulate several different audio tracks at once. And this is typically used for mixing in music or for editing podcasts and then mi mixing in multiple audio or dialogue tracks or mixing in music. It's also good for syncing up a voiceover to a video so you can do a many different things in multi-track, but today we're going to use it for adding music into an audiobook. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull over my audiobook narration. And I also do want to note that in these particular sections that I'm adding music to, they are 10 second intervals. And just a side note, my audio file for the book is nowhere near being done because if I formatted it for ACX before I add music, it's just going to throw all of my RMS and noise floor and everything just out of whack. So the only thing that I've done to my audiobook file here is added my initial rack, which is a general noise reduction, a deplosive, a D mouth click and a little bit of EQ and compression. That is all I've added to this yet because I need to add the music to it before I can format it for ACX's standards. So the intervals in which um, the client wanted the music was in particular points in 10 second intervals. So I'm only gonna do a section of it here so you can get the idea because I need to go back and do a few more things with the book. But let's go ahead and grab the music And I'm going to zoom in here so I can see what I'm doing. Now, as we can see, I've got a 10 second interval here between the two sections of narration and the music track is a little bit longer than that. So I'm going to put my headphones on so I can actually hear. Okay, that is pretty loud. So what I'm going to do is my narration is, I think, I'm going to mute the music for a minute. N T. Okay, so the narration is about negative uh, 16, negative 15. So I'm going to bring the music down to match that. So everything is uniform when I format it later. 
So I'm going to unmute the music track and I'm going to bring the volume down. Uh, let's see. Let's go with about negative. Well, let's just do negative 12 decibels and see if it matches up in volume. Okay, it's a little, well, I can actually go up just a smidge. So I'm going to reduce it to, let's say, 10.5 that actually works. Okay, so what I'm going to do, this music track is a lot longer than 10 seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it, let's see, look, I want to hear what this song sounds like so I know where to mix it in. Okay, so I'm going to start it right at the beginning of this new, like, little, where the peak of this music is here. So it looks like it's got, like, a melody. It's got it's high, whoops, <laughs> it's high, then it's low, then it's high, then it's low, then it's high, then it's low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it right at a high point of the music. So I'm going to line it up with the end of this part of the narration here. I'd say right about there. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to slowly bring the music in and then fade it out at the end of the 10 seconds. So from starting here, I'm going to click on the music and add a keynote, which is this little blue dot. And that enables me to manipulate the volume of this track. So I'm going to create another keynote next to it and then use that to drag the volume bar down so it'll fade in. And let's just test that really quick. Actually, I don't want it to be that much of a fade. It needs to be a quick fade. So let's try that. A. Okay, great. So then what I'm going to do is right at the beginning of my next set of narrations, I'm going to add another keynote and then another one next to it. So then I can drag the volume bar down to fade it back out because you don't want it to be an abrupt, you know, start and stop of music because then it'll just sound funny. You want it to have a nice fade in and a nice fade out, a nice mix in. So let's check the Fade out and make sure it sounds okay. Spell axe. Okay, good. And that works. And then after this is all done and I have all of the sections of music in those 10 minute intervals inserted into those sections, you know, nice mix in, nice mix out. And what I can actually do to make this easier because all of the intervals have the same music, I can just right click this music selection and copy it and then paste it in to my next interval. So if I put my playhead here and then right click on the track below and then paste it, it'll paste back in our music. And then I can just move it to where I want it. See, I don't think this one is quite 10 seconds. There we go. And that'll make the process so much easier. So I just uh, adjust the volume once and then I could just copy and paste the selection with each interval going forward, which will save me a ton of time, right? So once this is all done, I'm going to go to export, multi-track mix down, and the entire session. Okay, now here is my mix down. And again, this is nowhere near being close to done. I'm just showing you what I have so far for this demonstration. Um, this file mixed down as a stereo file because I believe the music track was stereo. So it kind of uh, copied that same information over. I don't want this to be stereo. It doesn't matter if it's stereo or mono for audiobooks. You just have to pick one format and stick with it. Personally, I like the sound of mono better for audiobooks. So I'm going to convert this file to uh, mono, which is one channel. Instead of being left and right, it's equal amongst both. So I'm going to save this as mono. There we go. Okay. Now let's just imagine that this file is completely done. It's ready to go be an audiobook. All the editing's done. All the music is inserted. So what do we do now? Well, now we have to format this book to comply with ACX's standards. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a test as it is now. I've already added my effects, again, my noise floor reduction, uh, my noise reduction, my deplosive, demouth click. So it should sound okay at this point. So all I need to do now is to normalize to negative 3 dB. And then go over to amplitude statistics and then scan the selection. And the result is the peak amplitude, this top one here, is at negative 3 dB as a peak, which is what ACX wants it to be as a peak value is negative 3 dB for volume. However, my total RMS amplitude is negative 25.61, which is a little off. We need to be at negative 23. So I need to go back a step down here in history. I can go back to after we convert it to mono and see what we need to fix to get it to match for ACX's standards. So I can already see just by looking at this file that I've got a couple of peaks here that are uh, much higher than the rest. So what I think I'm going to do is just grab this peak and I'm going to decrease the volume of that peak because that one peak can throw off the average RMS for the entire file. Scroll back out and see if I see any more. There's another one here. I'm just going to reduce that peak a little bit. Let's see if there's any more that catch my eye. There's a couple over here. Let's go ahead and reduce that guy. Reduce this guy. And maybe this guy. All right. So now let's try to normalize it again and see if we can get the right volume, get the right RMS amplitude. So, all right, let's scan it again. Okay, great. So now we are at negative 3 dB for our peak, ampl peak amplitude. And then our total RMS is at negative 22.72, which is a little bit close to negative 23, but still technically passes. So then, then this would be our finished audiobook file that we submit to the client after we, you know, properly name it and all that stuff. And that is how you add music to an audiobook. So I hope that helps answer your question. If you have any other questions about audiobook narration, production, or voiceover in general, please leave them down below. If you would like to know more about me, my work, or how I can help you get started in voiceover or audiobook narration, please check out my website at voiceoverangela.com. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you so much, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.